June 23rd, 2014, 2.33 p.m. Statement of Park Ranger Lance Billings. Location of incident redacted. The call came in at exactly 4.33 p.m. A missing child at campsite B11. All available personnel were asked to assist in the search. My partner Jason and I were among the first to arrive and were greeted by a frantic father who was begging us to find his daughter. The mother was in a near catatonic state and there were two other children sitting in the tent. Other units began to arrive, including search and rescue to coordinate ground units. We were split into small groups of four and given areas to search within a two mile radius. The furthest distance it was assumed the girl would be able to make it in the time given since her disappearance. We were provided with the description of the girl, being that she was four years old with blonde curls and brown eyes. She was approximately 36 inches tall and was last seen wearing a red dress with yellow flowers on it. She would answer to the name Lucy and was known to be timid around strangers. My group consisted of myself, Ranger Lance Billings, my partner, Ranger Jason Skye, and two civilian volunteers whose names I don't remember. We set off for our search area at approximately 6.45 p.m. with flashlights, flares, rope, and standard issue gear. Our search area was approximately one square mile of heavily forested land with uneven terrain and a cliff on the eastern edge. We covered this area in pairs, calling out for the girl and checking in every possible hiding place we could find. As night closed in, we returned to base camp with nothing to report. Myself and Ranger Sky were given a new search area and made our way to the zone to begin looking for any sign of the girl. Given the small area, we decided to split up and search on our own, keeping in touch via our two-way radios every 10 minutes. As I made my way along the western edge of the search area, I began to feel as if something was very wrong. I don't know how to explain it except to say the hair on my arms and neck was standing up and I was fairly certain I was being watched. I was calmly calling out to Lucy and on a couple of occasions I thought I heard some movement not far from where I was. I radioed Ranger Sky to check in and he reported he was also hearing sounds near his position but he had not been able to locate the source either. Coming over the crest of a small hill, I noticed what looked like some kind of den about 30 yards in front of me at the bottom of a slope. Shining my light around the area, I called out to Lucy again and was met with silence at first. After about 15 seconds, I started walking toward the den, but stopped and ducked behind a bush when I saw something coming out of it. At first, I thought there was a large bear, though we don't normally have bears in this park. I kept my light on the animal as it slowly crept out, though it didn't seem to notice or acknowledge my presence. As more of it came into view, I could see it had a thick coat of dark brown fur. It walked on four legs and it had a tail that looked like it was at least a meter long and covered in some kind of barbs. It was at this point that I got a good look at its face as it turned toward me. The eyes appeared to be solid white and the snout was similar to something I have seen on dolphins. Large teeth protruded from both the bottom and top jaws, interlocking and giving it the appearance of some kind of claw. As I watched, it stood up on its hind legs, revealing the front paws to be more human-like than I expected. Its belly and chest were also like that of a man, with no hair at all. It looked as if it was going to come my way when a noise to its left caught its attention and it bolted off into the forest. Before I could react to this, the sound of crying caught my ear and I remembered why I was out there. I could tell the sound was coming from the den and I made my way over as quickly and quietly as I could. As I approached the hole, the smell of something rotting overwhelmed me and I nearly had to turn around. Looking inside, I could see what appeared to be a large number of bones and animal remains covering the ground. As I shined my light around, I saw a small mound in the back that was moving and I realized I had found Lucy. 
I crept into the den, telling the girl who I was and letting her know she would be okay. It took a few minutes to gain her trust, but I was able to bring her safely out and we made our way back to the base of operations with no further encounters with the animal. I tried to reach Ranger Sky over the radio multiple times as I made my way back, but he failed to respond. I could not take time to search for him at that moment as my priority was to get Lucy back to her family. Upon returning to the base, I was informed we had lost communication with three members of the search party in addition to Ranger Sky. I relayed what I had seen and gave the coordinates of the den, but the decision was made to refrain from further searches until daylight. The search and rescue commander made a call to his commander and we were informed that a new unit would be arriving at daybreak to begin searching for the missing rescuers. At approximately 7 a.m., three large black armored personnel carriers arrived and 30 heavily armed soldiers dismounted. A commander from this unit debriefed me once more about what I saw and where I saw it, and I watched the men head off in the direction of the den. After about two hours, the men returned, carrying the body of Ranger Sky on a stretcher. They loaded him up on one of their vehicles and reported that we would all need to evacuate due to a growing fire in the area. I inquired about the status of Ranger Sky and was told he was in need of immediate medical assistance. I was not allowed to see him and was escorted back to my post to collect my personal belongings before being taken home. The reported fire wiped out several hundred acres before being extinguished, and I was later informed the fire had been started by Ranger Sky as he tried to stay warm overnight following an injury that immobilized him. I was unable to ask Ranger Sky about this as he supposedly perished from his injuries in a medical facility on a nearby military installation. I have spoken to several people who were involved in the search and none of them seem to remember losing any rescuers other than Ranger Sky. Lucy's parents have publicly stated that their daughter was hiding in the roots of a tree and was found with no incident. They refused to even speak to me. I've been told that my position in the Forest Service is no longer needed and none of my old co-workers will even acknowledge that I worked there. I'm not sure what is going on, but I know what I saw. There's something out there and I'm going to prove it if it's the last thing I do. Final Evaluation Lance Billings is a threat to security and must be redlined. Permission to follow up granted. <laughs>